Hey everybody, welcome back to the Retro Ghetto and today we're going to be taking a look at my Christmas wish list. Okay, so it's that time of the year. Uh, back in my day, we used to circle pictures in the Argos catalogue to tell Santa what we wanted. Um, them days are long gone now. But I thought it was a good time of the year for me to show you guys what it is that I'm wanting um, for my collection. As you can see, I like buying shit, putting it in a room and looking at it. Uh, that's just one of the things I enjoy doing. I could have made this list about 100 long, but I decided to just uh, do 10. And I've tried to do grail pieces, um, pieces that are realistic, so affordable and also do some pieces of which I've got a bit of a history with and there's a bit of a story behind it. So I've tried to put a few different things in the list. Um, you know, Christmas is all about getting presents, right? So uh, without further ado, first thing on my list of wants is Punisher on the Mega Drive. Uh, this was originally um, an arcade cab um, and by all accounts one of the greatest uh, side scrolling beat em ups ever made. Now, I've never really had much hands-on experience with this cabinet. I recently went to um, like a barcade and I heard they had a cabinet and I was really excited about playing it. But when I got there, the actual uh, Punisher cab was in the toilet. I think I've got a picture of it, I'll show you. And I don't know, the buttons were a bit sticky and I started thinking about the hygiene, you know, having a cab in a toilet, the people that have been playing it before me. And this was before the days of having hand sanitizer everywhere, as crazy as that now sounds. Um, so yeah, I've not done much playing with it. I really want the game just to experience it. You know, it's not just one of them stick it on the shelf because it's valuable. But the reason I've not been able to get it, the reason it's on this list, is because it's just a lot of money. Um, last time I checked, it was like anywhere from three to five hundred pound, and for me, that's just not a realistic price to pay. Uh, I might end up picking up a repro at some point. I'm not a big fan of reproduction stuff. Um, I certainly wouldn't put it on the shelf or try and pass it off as uh, genuine. But just in terms of being able to play it, I'd probably buy it, play it, and then, you know, just put it back on eBay and sell it again once I've uh, played through it. So, yeah, first thing on the list, this list is Punisher for the Mega Drive. Um, yeah, just something I think I'd enjoy playing. Okay, next one. This is a grail piece. This is um, something that is very high on my wish list. Um, it's very expensive. It's hard to get a hold of. But I'm determined to actually get this at some point. Um, after I said we're going to be moving soon, so I'll have a bigger room. And uh, yeah, I'm hoping that this will feature in that new Man Cave 3.0, as I'm calling it, at some point. And that is a life-size Kratos. Um, as you guys know, I'm a huge God of War fan. Uh, and NECA, um, the famous toy company, made a life-size uh, version of Kratos um, when the last God of War came out in 2018, I think it was. Um, I have to have this. I've currently got a life-size link. Um, probably put some video footage of that up now. And I'd probably sell this to make room and also free up a bit of funds uh, for Kratos, which I happily do. And uh, yeah, it's just one of the things I feel like I have to have it. Um, there has been a couple online and I've made cheeky offers, but the problem you've got is not only is it expensive, you can buy it new in both America and Australia. It was even on Zabby at one point. Um, it's no longer on there. Um, and it's about $1,200. The problem is, it costs you that again in customs and shipping. Because it's so large and it's so valuable. So I'm not looking to spend $2,000 or £2,000 or whatever it equates to be on one. Um, but at some point, if I play the patient game, I'm hoping one will come up for the right price. And uh, yeah, so that's definitely on the list for sure. Uh, next thing on here. Now this one is definitely obtainable. I put this on the list uh, in case any family members watching want to buy me something for Christmas. And that's uh, a blazing switch. Blazing switch? Blazing chrome for the switch. Um, I love this game. I bought it digitally because it was something like eight quid during an eShop sale a while back. Absolutely loved it. It's a throwback to the Contra games, um, Pro Protector. And uh, yeah, it's such a good game. I thought, you know what? I like this so much. I want a physical copy of it. But because it was limited run and because it's so popular and so sought after, it sells for like £80 or so on the second hand market. And I don't really want to be spending £80 on the Switch game. So that's the reason why I haven't bought it yet. And um, that's the reason it's on this list. But hopefully at some point 
I'll buy it because as I say it's um it's something I'd like to play. I'd like to own. Okay, next. So as you guys probably know from my history of hip hop and video games video, I'm a huge hip hop fan. Um, especially uh, hip hop from the 90s. Uh, I mean, everything was better in the 90s, right? Um, and I collect by a company called Mezco, the notorious B.I.G. figures. You can just about see them there, but I'll add some footage up. Now, there's one especially which has eluded me. Um, it's the Biggie wearing the attire from the Juicy video and the bad boy uh, basketball top, I think it is. Now, this only came out at San Diego Comic Con, I think in 2010. Might have been before that. But yeah, it was only available at SDCC. So very hard to get hold of. Very hard to get hold of in this country especially. Um, but yeah, this is definitely something I would like to add to my set. I think that will pretty much complete my set as well. So um, it's definitely something I'm looking out for. I've seen a couple on eBay, but I'm not prepared to pay £300 pounds for it at this time. But uh, yeah, Santa, if you're listening, I'd like a biggie Mezco SDCC exclusive. Okay, this next one is not really one specific item, but a conglomerate of items, I suppose you'd call it. And that's to get my Wii U set completed. Um, I went on it at Hammer and Tongs last year, and uh, I've got sort of halfway there. I'm not sh just shy of about 100 games, I think, at last count. Um, I haven't added to it much this year. I've kind of slowed down uh, on it. It's just sort of took a back seat. Um, but it's always been one of my collecting goals to have a full set. Now, I know that won't make sense to a lot of people, especially as there's not that many games on the Wii U I want to play at this time. A lot of the big titles have already been ported to the Switch, so there's a lot more playability um, for those games elsewhere. However, as I say, it's just something I've always wanted to tick off my collecting goals um, to get a full set. To get a full Nintendo set as well would be fantastic. And I can only see the Wii U games going up in value. Um, I've noticed um, in the couple of years I've been collecting it how certain games have already become very pricey they're not necessarily games people want to play but they're just games that there's just not that many of you just don't see them that often um you know it wasn't that many we console we you console so never mind some of the games so over time i could see a lot of these games becoming very valuable and i think it's something collectors will um want more and more uh, as the years go on so I'd really like to get the full set now whilst it's somewhat affordable. I've got a lot of the uh, big big titles ticked off, some of the more expensive ones. If you watch my pickups videos, you'll see that I recently added. Let's see if I've got it down here. Yeah, I recently added uh, Project Zero, Made in a Blackwater. This is one of the more expensive games um, in the set. So yeah, it's nice to have ticked that off the list. But yeah, so that's definitely one going forward. I'd like to get that done, get that completed. At least up until this point, because they are still adding new games. I recently bought a couple of the new releases, um, which are still coming out in limited format. But um, yeah, for we use it. Okay, so as you guys know from pretty much every single pickups video I've ever made, I love Street Fighter and I love collecting Street Fighter action figures. Um, my favourite Street Fighter action figure is arguably the Storm Collectibles Player One standard red colour Zangief. Now. I had this, it's probably the most sought after Street Fighter action figure there is as well. Um, and I randomly found it, it was in my birthday last year, I was in New York. And of all places, it was a billionaire boys club shop, which if you don't know, is like a, a men's fashion brand. And in the back of this uh, just fashion shop, there was um, like a, a detail cabinet, I suppose you'd call it, like a glass cabinet. And there was a few of the Sota figures in there, uh, Storm figures in there, sorry. And one of them was Zangief. The one that I'd been coveting for a while, and it was um, like ninety dollars, so it was retail price. So I snapped it up, was really happy with my purchase. And then, as time went on, the value in the figure just kept going up and up and up and up. And I thought, this is getting silly now. And uh, I ended up selling mine for two hundred and thirty pounds, which, as much as I love the figure, two hundred and thirty pounds for a standard uh, one to twelve scale action figure is a lot of money. And you know how it goes, collectors, you know, you've, I probably spent a lot of money that month on some of the crap you can see behind me. And I thought, yeah, now's the time to uh, cash in. I don't, I won't say I regret it because of the value I got for it, but I miss it. It's one of those I've got a bit of seller's remorse because it had a nice story behind it, with it being in New York, with it being on my birthday, and with me still actively collecting Street Fighter action figures. 
I feel like it's a bit of a glaring omission in my collection. So uh, it's definitely something I'd like to get put back onto the shelf. Not that I've got any room. Um, but yeah, that's definitely on the list. That's, that's a Zangief Storm Collectibles action figure. Okay, back to actual games now. And uh, you've probably seen from, uh, if you watched my last video, which was uh, games completed in 2020, that I recently fell in love with shooters. Um, I've just purchased, I'm currently playing uh, Ikaruga. And I've completed my first shooter or shmup this year, which was uh, Thunder Force 4. So it's got me in a bit of a, a shmup um, sort of hype, if you like. And there's one game I really want on the SNES, Super Nintendo, which is uh, R-Type, I was thinking what number it was, R-Type 3. Now, by all accounts, this is a very good shooter. Uh, I'd say there's probably more shooters on the Mega Drive. Don't kill me in the comments, but... I think that probably, uh, you know, probably does uh, favour the Mega Drive more when it comes to the 16-bit shooters. But R-Type 3 is definitely one on my list. I'm thankful enough to have got most the Grail games that I wanted for the Super Nintendo, some of which you can see behind me. But uh, yeah, R-Type 3 is definitely one of the time I saved eBay searches. It is somewhat affordable uh, in bad condition. I've seen them go for sort of 70-ish. But uh, it's never been quite the right time for me to pull the trigger. And to get one in very good condition, you're looking at anything up to sort of three, four hundred pounds. So uh, yeah, it's not a cheap one, but R-Type 3 on the SNES is definitely something I'm hoping to uh, add to my set at some point. Okay, this next one. This, this has been haunting me for years, guys. So you guys all know what a big God of War fan I am. Um, I love everything about it. I love um, the games, the merchandise, the figures, the clothes, you name it, I've got it, I love it. Uh, I've got a shield over there, a life-size shield sitting on the wall that you'll have seen in one of my previous pickups videos also. But um, I've always really wanted the original God of War standee. I'll put some footage or pictures of it here now. It's just a beautiful piece of art. Um, I love Greek mythology and it's got Kratos holding Medusa's head. It's sort of 3D, it comes off. Now you know how much I love my uh, standees and my promo stuff. I previously made a video about some of my promotional pieces. Um, I just, it's definitely a grail of mine to have this standee. Um, so much so that I think maybe two years ago for my birthday, uh, my missus uh, said, you know what, I'll get you one. And, uh, so I found one online and initially it wasn't for sale in the UK. Um, it was actually a video game store in the US that was selling it. And there was a lot of dialogue between myself and them and eventually we agreed a price and we agreed the shipping costs etc and this was before ebay started doing all that sort of uh, international shipping automatically so yeah the deal was done i think i paid roughly about 200 pounds which is not actually a bad price because they're going for two three hundred dollars so to get it shipped to that price wasn't too bad um and yeah so then it was just a waiting game and then time kept ticking on and ticking on and i was following it up and trekking the tracking Basically, to cut a long story short, this uh, this standee made it from, I think it was Tennessee, right the way to Coventry, which is not far from me, I live in the Midlands, and that was it, it's gone, disappeared, I don't know what happened to it, eventually I got refunded, uh, at the time I just got to that point where I just wanted my money back because, you know, it was £200, a lot of money, seemingly the standee's gone, um, it became more of a battle of, or at least give me my money back. Um, so I don't end up out of pocket but obviously as time's gone on I just really wish I'd had the standee but I don't know I don't know if there's some little Christmas tent somewhere um, in Coventry sitting in a room with uh, my God of War standee uh, I don't know what happened to it I still hold out hope that one day I can get a knock on the door like oh yeah we found this package buried I mean it's probably unlikely but uh, yeah I've got unfinished business with that standee it's something that I will have at some point. It's just finding it in this country and finding it at the right price. So yeah, the original God of War standee, that's on the list. Okay, so this next one uh, again is Super Nintendo. And I'll put some pictures up here if I can find some. I used to have um, a lot of the Super Nintendo console boxes. I used to collect that as well as the games. And over time, I just thought to myself, I didn't have the room and... You know, the love had somewhat gone for them. So I just sort of concentrated more on the games than on the console boxes themselves. But I had most of them, um, certainly UK releases, and the standard box size, I think I did have them all. 
including the uh, FIFA one, which was the rarest one and the one which uh, took me the, hot, the longest um, to find. But recently, I've been thinking I'd like a couple back. Um, being such a big Street Fighter fan and Super Nintendo fan, it just seems to make sense for me to have the two Super Nintendo Street Fighter console variants. Um, I don't want to say too much more about it, but tune into my next pickups video and uh, yeah, I might have uh, an update on that for you. But yeah, I want this Street Fighter Turbo and the original Street Fighter 2 box. Um, and uh, yeah, tune in for the next one and uh, hopefully we might be uh, halfway there. Okay, last but by no means least. Um, probably the item that I would choose over anything else um, if I could pick anything and that would be a Super Nintendo kiosk now I know somebody that's selling one um, it's actually on eBay but he won't budge on the price which is fair enough because it's one of them you can make your own price there's not many out there and they're certainly worth a lot um, probably a couple of years ago I negotiated on buying one I think I offered something like £1,200 and it ended up getting sold for slightly more than that but he knew the guy that was um, buying it so it didn't really ever come back to me to make a counter offer which was a bit of a kick in the teeth at the time but it is what it is but uh, yeah I would absolutely love a SNES kiosk um, you know I used to have three kiosks again I'll put a picture up if I can find them I just sold some due to not having the room so I've just got my Xbox 360 one over there now um, I kept that because I use it the most and I've got plans to um, modify it i'm not going to say too much more than that because that would be a video in itself but yeah i'd absolutely love a snes kiosk being a huge snes fan um, having that with me would just be like the uh the cherry on top of the icing of the cake so uh yeah i'm not sure it's realistic they're so expensive but in a, an ideal world if i win the lottery i'll uh, i'll be on ebay buying that one so uh, i think it's in yarmouth i'd have to drive for, for that but yeah listen i appreciate you guys checking in um like I say, it just felt right doing this list at this time. A um, bit of an update and hopefully we can do something similar at this time next year and see if I've actually ticked off any of these from my list. Um, next year is going to be a big year for me, for the channel, for this room. Um, we're hopefully going to a new house. I'm literally going to build a new games room from scratch. We're going to be converting what is an art building. And I'm going to take you guys along for the ride. So make sure you um, subscribe. And I'm going to do, make a mini series of turning basically a garage into what I foresee to be the ultimate man cave. Also, coming up in the next couple of weeks, um, we're out again. Uh, we're out of lockdown and I'm hoping to be out and about doing uh, some live game hunts. I'm also going to be doing a toy hunt at a vintage toy store. So yeah, there'll be a couple of uh, hunting videos, um, probably one either side of Christmas. So uh, yeah, really looking forward to that. Um, you know, They always do quite well on the channel. I think you guys enjoy it i enjoy it and now lockdown's over hopefully we can get uh, a few more of them uh, back up back up soon so yeah please guys hit the subscribe button um stay tuned for the content we've got planned um if i don't see you again have a great christmas uh everybody else i'll see you next week and uh, keep it retro see you in a minute retro ghetto <laughs>